Hi guys, it's Doreen and welcome back. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Doreen and I do all types of lifestyle videos here on my YouTube channel. Um, but today I have a video where I'm going to be sharing with you guys my personal experience and giving you guys a review on my very first bike, which is the 2022 Yamaha XT250. Um, it is my first bike, but I've also owned it now for almost a year. I bought it back in September of 2021. So um, now we're in August, so of course, it's been almost a year and I just want to tell you guys, give you guys a little review, talk about my personal experience owning this bike, talk about the pros and cons, and just share with you guys my personal thoughts. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video and let's just get right into it. All right, so this here is kind of like an overview of the bike. This is what it looks like. His name is Bruno, <laughs> but it's a very happy bike. I've kept pretty much everything stock on it. Um, the only add-ons I kind of put on it are some hand guards. I also added this thing here, or well, my dad added this. This is actually a battery tenor that connects to the battery of the bike, and it's actually connecting to a jacket that I have that is from Hotwired, and it heats, it has like basically a heated jacket. And then the other last, I guess, little add-on is this one here. My dad also added this one for me as well. Um, so this one is just basically like a phone charger. Other than that, everything else is pretty much stock on the bike. The bike does have a lot of dings on it and a lot of scratches and I, I've put it to good use. So some information about this bike. The base price starts at $5,199 and I personally decided to get it from a dealership. I wanted to have this one be as a payment to build up my credit score and just like be a brand new bike that I know nobody else worked on it, nobody else fell with it, no one did anything to it so that's why everything was brand new and all this is my doing. <laughs> it is a very fuel efficient bike. It has about 76 miles per gallon. It is an electric start and it is a four stroke. Um, so here you have like your start, your, um, your kill switch, and then you have your ignition here. It is fuel injected so that allows for a smooth and easy throttle, especially as a beginner bike. This is kind of one of the reasons why I decided with this bike. It is five speed and is obviously a manual bike. So you have your clutch up here and you have your shifter down here. The front tire of the bike is 21 inches in rim size and then the rear tire is an 18 inch rim size. The seat height is 31.9 inches and it has a ground clearance of 11.2 inches. And this was especially important for me when deciding on a bike because I'm very short at five foot one and a half. So I was debating between the WR and the XT. So I just thought that this one would be so much better because I was able to actually reach the ground with this seat. And personally for me, I did take it to get the seat cut from a professional. So the seat is a little bit lowered. I believe he cut about an inch or two inches off the seat. So that's why it's shaved down a little bit which makes it a lot easier that I can actually reach the ground and just feel more comfortable on it. It does have an automatic chain tension and this allows for minimal maintenance, which for me as a beginner, I just thought that that would be something really good to have. I know that a lot of people, they might choose something that they can work on so they can be very hands-on and, and learn to do a lot of things as they go. It does have an LCD panel and um, this allows it to be very minimal weight on the handlebar so there's not actually a lot going on here I did get the key copied in um, a better material here a better metal just because the other one was very bendy and i got about four different spare keys so i actually don't have a lot of miles on the bike it has around 561 miles right now so it's not too many but i did get it at zero miles so for me it's a pretty good amount because i don't take this bike every day but i do take it every once in a while 
and I've been trying to take it out a lot more. Up here on this panel, you have where it lets you know what that you have in neutral. You have like your high beams when you gotta get gas, your turn signal, and then when you need to do any maintenance or an oil change. So it's very, very simple. It's not too heavy. It's not anything too complicated going on here. It doesn't bother too much for the whole handlebar situation. It does have these mirrors that are pretty tall. They kind of look like a little bug, but I don't mind it. I heard that Yamaha said that they were actually inspired by trials bikes. It is spark arrestor friendly, and this means that it's going to be ready for trails, especially in California. We have a lot of certain laws here. Um, but yeah, so everything is all set and ready to go. It does have a low maintenance battery. The battery is inside under the seat here. Um, it's very, very small battery, and it's not very difficult to get. The bike is also passenger ready with these handlebars on the sides and then it also has the foot pegs here on the bottom. It's ready to go and it's attached to the frame so it's pretty solid. It has an enduro style 6055 watt halogen headlight with 133 millimeter lens for great night visibility. And then it also has dual sport lighting which is for the indicators that they're very flexible and it offers great durability so it's not going to be breaking anytime you're going to drop the bike. I've had them pop out now and then, but I just really pop them back in. There's pretty simple screw on the side here. So it's pretty easy to uh, replace them if needed. They are a little bulky, but they get the job done. And also in the back here, pretty bendy and flexible. So it's not gonna be breaking every time you drop the bike. All right, so I'm gonna share with you guys some pros and cons and just tell you guys a little bit about my background in riding. Um, so I first started out dirt biking. I took my very first class of ever on a bike. I first started with Dirt First Moto Ventures class. I have a vlog of that and if you guys wanna see just me ever being on a bike and learning to ride. I took that in May of 2021. So that was my first time ever learning to dirt bike, ever being on a bike. And I knew that I wanted to buy a bike right then and there, but I did have to wait a little bit. So four months after that class, I ended up buying this bike. I didn't even test drive or anything. I just went to the dealership, made the deal and bought it and took it home. Because I knew that I was going to have to learn everything hands on. My very first event, I went to Babes in the Dirt. I have another vlog of that. I have pretty much all these vlogs showing my progress with dirt biking. And pretty much I stayed dirt biking only. The main reason why I bought a dual sport was just because I thought that it would be a lot easier and talking to friends that had bikes, they recommended for me to get a dual sport. They just said having a plated bike is gonna be a lot easier than having a red sticker or a green sticker and it really outweighed the pros and cons for my type of riding and what I enjoy doing. And I did watch a lot of videos, I did a lot of research into knowing for what would be the best fit for me. So with this bike, it's been pretty great i still like dirt biking with it a lot more but it did recently get my m1 street license so i've been riding it a lot more in the street which is different from dirt i'll say it's easier but i still like dirt biking a lot more i just have been riding a little bit more street recently just because i haven't had as much time to go and take it out into the dirt it's been a really great bike some of the cons i would say is that it's a really heavy bike i believe it weighs around 200 and 98 pounds so almost 300 pounds so dropping it it's a little bit of a hassle i definitely had to build up a little bit of muscle figure out the best way to pick it up and have new techniques in doing so i have been able to successfully pick it up twice now dropped it a lot more times than that Yeah, it's all kind of a learning curve for me. So I personally still have a lot to learn still. Still a beginner, still learning a lot. But yeah, it's just, it's overall a really great bike and I've really enjoyed it. Another con, I guess I would say, is that it doesn't go very fast. So I've taken on the freeway twice now. The first time it was having a really, really bad wobble. As soon as it reached 65 miles per hour, it was kind of going side to side and I, pulled over, took it home, checked the tire pressure. The tire pressure was a little bit low, so I added more, tried to go back on the freeway, and it was still doing that wobble at 65. So I've talked to some friends and done some research about people who have the same bike as me and the same model. Um, and most people say that's just the bike. It's not really meant to go super fast. So 
I'm just guessing it's not really a freeway bike even though it's a lot on the freeway since it's 250 doesn't mean that it's necessarily meant for that so I'm just trying to keep it mainly on the main roads side roads you know I'm not really taking it anywhere crazy I've taken it to work I've taken it to the beach I've taken it to lots of different places through the canyons and just really enjoying it and not really needing to go very fast so that's definitely a pro and con for me so riding in the street I definitely feel like it's a little slow riding in the dirt it's the perfect speed perfect size other than it being too heavy but I think that's pretty much it in terms of like a review my personal take on it I do think it's a great price for what you get I I'm very very happy that I got this as my first bike it's I just love the shape of it I love the look of it um, it's been a pretty good bike to me overall I've had zero issues with it I've done my first oil change on my own and it was super easy I had a coworker help me no problem I was just like wow it's that easy all right I got it so it's been really really great living in California obviously everything's a little bit more expensive but gas of course I'm just like wow this is so nice to only have to pay ten dollars for gas at maximums i believe it holds about two and a half gallons so not a lot can go in there but it does go for a really long time i've heard it's twice as fuel as economic as a prius so that sounds pretty good to me very easy to use it's very very smooth bike i also briefly want to mention as for gear if you guys have any questions um i did recently get a adventure helmet which is this one by arai I do have a Cena attached to it, which I just got recently and I'm still figuring out but having no issues with. And I also have some Alpine Star gloves. So I am still getting my street gear together. I know that I'm not the most prepared for street gear, but I did invest in a pretty good helmets and that was like the main thing that I wanted to get. I do want to get a pretty good jacket. I'm looking at the Alpine Star Stella jacket for me because I just personally really like Alpine Stars. And as for my dirt biking gear, I do have an in-depth review about the gear that I chose, how I sized it, and just the gear that I personally use. I will link that video also in the description box down below if you guys want to check it out. And then, so like I said, for street gear, I am still pretty new into street, so I'm getting all my gear together. I always make sure that I ride with boots. And if you guys are wondering where to get gear, I would highly, highly recommend going to Cycle Gear or Revzilla. They have usually a lot of pretty good deals. and. You can always go into store, try on different helmets, try on different jackets, gloves, whatever it is that you need. Finding like women's gear, I've noticed that a lot of stores don't really have too many stock, like actually in store. So I'd recommend going online. You do have a lot of options online and you can always order to a store and uh, try it on there. It doesn't work out, you can always return it. That's personally what I find best, but I really hope that tip kind of gives you guys a little bit of direction and where to go and find that. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much my bike so if you guys have any questions if you guys have any tips or just things that you want to share and you guys found this video informative definitely leave down in the comments below what you guys thought if you like content like this and you want to see me riding my bike and seeing my progress and seeing my journey with my bike definitely consider subscribing it is free to do so so you guys won't miss any videos like that so I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next video next time thank you so much for watching bye